that turned on. And we know there's patients that would turn the TV on and then not turn it off till the discharge. So we're now going to prompt the patients at 6 a.m., 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. So regardless of what they're watching on the television, those times that black box is going to come up and say, you know, we still have videos that are outstanding. Once they watch all their videos, they'll stop getting prompted. Any questions about how that part works? So to turn on the system, you hit the power button. And the first time the, <coughs> the television comes on, there's going to be a welcome video. Right now it's a generic video, um, but your president has recorded a video that will, I think at the end of the month, by the end of the month, there will actually be a video that's specific to your hospital. So right now it's just kind of generic information explaining um, University Hospital and how to use the pillow remote. Okay? So the directions down on the bottom tell you to hit the menu key or you can just go straight up and down to the channel. So we're going to hit the menu button and the menu button is going to bring up the main menu. So every time after they turn on that TV and hit the I don't want to watch the videos now or later, um, then it'll come here to the main menu. You can see there's four buckets. So we have a dashboard, education, hospital information, and TV and more. So on the dashboard, this is the place where they put the most important things that we want the patients to see every time they go back to that main menu. First and foremost, we'll be watching the education videos. So right now, I don't have a number next to that because my patient has not been assigned any videos. But the number that would come up there in a red circle would be the number of videos still outstanding. So if, you've ex <clears throat> if you have prescribed 10 videos to them and there's two that they haven't watched, there would be a red circle with a two in it and they would continue to get prompted until they finished. They can go back and watch those videos as many times as they like, but they have to watch it once in order to get the message sent automatically back into Epic. So that'll be our role to prompt our patients along with the prompts on the television to get them watched. All right, <clears throat> orientation video, that's the one that explains, that's the one that they just had, but if they accidentally want to um, miss that button and they want to go back and see the orientation video again, they can certainly bring it up from there. Part of the patient experience is allowing patients to have some control of what happens to them while they're here in the hospital, having some ability to ask for things themselves. So we have a make a request, so we'll select the make a request. And there's three different requests currently that the patients can ask for on their own. They can ask for a pastoral care visit, they can ask for volunteer services visit, and they can also um, speak to the, the foundation about an excellent experience that they've had here. So they would then select the one that they wanted to, <clears throat> to request, and then they'd select to put a yellow check mark. That yellow check mark is also how they'll know which videos they've watched. It's the same yellow check mark. So I'm gonna send this request that I want pastoral care to come and visit me, and it tells me down on the bottom to press number one to submit that request. So I press number one, and it goes ahead and reminds me of the hours of pastoral care, so I'm not anticipating that if I put this in at one o'clock in the morning, pastoral care's not here until seven. So that way that they're not expecting someone to come right away. This request, so I'll hit my select button to send it off. It's now an email request that goes to those three different departments, depending on which one they selected, and it will only have the room name on it, not the patient's name. So the room number, I'm sorry, not the patient's name. So if they come up and say, we're here to see the patient in 424, but you've now moved that patient to another room, just be aware they will not have the patient's name from a HIPAA for privacy compliance, okay? So you may have to hunt for that patient. Any questions about that? They just didn't want to put the name on the request. All right, so we're gonna go back. So there's a back button on here. We'll go back to our main menu. The other thing that they wanted to make easily available to the patient is the relaxation channel. This is a channel on their TV lineup. So when you select this, it's channel four in your TV lineup. So it's a nature channel. It's just quiet. It's got peaceful birds, fishes, um, hot air balloons, penguins. So if there's something that you just want to put on to the patient to try and help calm them or to help relax them, <clears throat> they're about 10, seven to 10 minute videos and they roll through, there's 65 of them. So it takes about 20 hours to get through all of your videos. You can't fast forward or anything, but just know if you watch something at 10 o'clock today, it won't be the same thing at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Okay? All right, to go back to the main menu, I'm gonna hit my menu button again. And probably one of my favorite features as a bedside nurse is being able to go to the watch TV. And the cool thing about this is it's now an interactive program guide. So you no longer have to memorize which channel is Fox on, which channel is CBS, what time does Live with Kelly and Ryan come on. So you can just go straight to the patient's program and hit select and it'll go straight there. 
Okay. So you don't have to keep those little papers anymore. <laughs> they always want to know what you did. <clears throat> so that's what lives on the dashboard. It also shows the last channel that the patient went to. If the patient had watched a movie, it would also say resume movie. So I'll talk about movies in just a second. Any questions about what lives on the dashboard? The big push here is going to be to make sure that our patients complete those education videos that you've assigned. Did they do any, you know, hey, did they do any kind of a focus group thing to see if patients are willing to participate? Did participate in? Having to watch these videos? And having to watch the videos? Well, we have to educate patients regardless, so this is just an extra tool. Uh -huh. You can educate patients via the teach back method. Um, certainly we do a whole lot of verbal teaching. Yeah. So this is just an adjunct to what you were already doing. Okay. Because you know what, I, I do work at night and when patients get to the floor at night, they've been in the ER sure. for a, a long time and they're really not, um, they basically just want to cool out. Or right, and go to sleep. And I understand that. That's why they're prompted during the day instead of in the evening time. Because during the day there's a lot of downtime. But that's probably when they're more cognizant of what you're trying to teach them anyways. I know at nighttime it's really just the, the real zip zip stuff that I need to tell you. Um, but no, I don't believe we did a focus group here. But um, all of the videos are written at a fifth grade education level or lower. So the nice piece about this is they can watch these videos over and over again or share them with their family um, and caregivers when they come. So maybe the patient's not able to understand all of that information that their caregiver and their family members are. All right, so the second button over is the education bucket. So you have about 150 videos that are mapped to points in education, but there are actually over 500 videos in the education library, so English and Spanish. So if there's something that you would like on a procedure or on a test, you can look through the library and find something, so can the patient, so they can find videos that they want to watch. If they select them this way and pick something they want to watch on their own or you put something up for them, if it doesn't get prescribed in Epic, it will not get manually or automatically recorded. So then you would just, as your teaching method for this particular point, you can just put that you showed the patient a video. Lots of very good information here. It shows on the side how much, how long each of these videos are. Underneath is the Spanish equivalent for each of the English titles on top. So we'll start the video. <clears throat> so if the patient was watching the video and then they got interrupted, all they have to do is hit that select button in the middle and it will pause their video for up to 10 minutes. So you can take their temperature, give them their meds, give them their tray, whatever, ask them a question, and then it will go back right to playing the video where they left off. If for some reason they need to leave and they don't want to save, they want to save their spot, just hitting the number two will save their spot in that video and they can re go back to that video at the same spot they left off anytime. Another nice feature that we've added is we do a lot of talking about medications as well. You now have a medication library. So, <clears throat> oh, I hit the wrong button, I'm sorry. I'll have my glasses on, this is too small for me. <laughs> so we have a medication library. There's over 600 medications that are in this library, English and Spanish. So when you have to start the education process, sometimes for patients it's a little easier to listen to something than it is to read those big, long um, drug monographs. So all you need to do is find a medication. You can search by generic or by brand name. Bring up a medication, and they all look the same, so I'll show you. We'll start one. They all are a man or a woman in a white coat. <clears throat> about the videos is it just gives them the information that they need. Two to three minutes, fifth grade education level or lower, really quick, and then you can just record that you've educated your patient. Same thing works. If I need to inter be interrupted, I can pause it for up to 10 minutes, and I can save my spot and come back and watch that video later. Okay? All right, some other information that lives underneath of the education tab. <laughs> okay. Some other information under here, um, and I can't show you because I don't see it's welcome, comma, and I don't have a name, so I don't have a patient admitted here, so I can't showcase this to you. 
But on the discharge checklist, nothing gets reported back into Epic. It's just a list of items to have that discussion with your patient. So notify your nurse if you need help getting your medication. Notify your nurse if you need someone to be here when you get your discharge instructions. So it's just talking points um, to get your patient prepared for discharge. My health record. So this is how information on how they would sign up to, for the education portal. Does everybody have their own Epic My Chart? Very convenient tool. You have the ability to send messages, make appointments, communicate with your physician. Another really cool thing is once they go home, all the videos that you have prescribed to them while they're here in the hospital, the patient will be able to watch on the education tab on the MyChart portal. So if there was something, a very long procedure, so if there's breastfeeding videos, um, ostomy videos, things that, you know, a lot of education for patients, they will still have access to them once they're discharged if they've signed up for the education portal. They go back. <laughs> and patient safety. So this is some information on how to keep your patient safety while they're uh, safe while they're here in the hospital. So assessing their skin, infection prevention, and certainly ask for help to prevent falls. All right, we'll go back again. We'll get to the main menu. So that's what lives under the education bucket. Any questions there? All right, then we'll scoot over to the next one, which is hospital information. This is all essentially replacing what's up here in the <coughs> patient guidebook. So we've got visitor information as far as guest hours, smoking health, um, the ICU and the adult ER. <coughs> Parking and valet, this is always a big hot topic. Who do I call to get my car? Um, what am I supposed to do with my car if it gets damaged? So great information. Dining choices, so for the day shift, this is probably more important than the night shift, but again, I wanna let you know what types of food options are available and what the hours are. Service and amenities. So you, sure. Can the patient, sometimes they have preferences. Mm -hmm. Can they put that in, like their preferences? For dining, dining. like they'll have like, hey, in the morning, can you get me? Extra bacon. Two pieces of bacon. Yeah. Right. And well, the answer is no, not this time. Okay. What's happening um, is this was the basic system to get started. So it's such a change in the way you guys were currently doing education and um, a, a whole host of options you'll see in the TV more for distraction. So we want to get you familiar with the system, but it's kind of a living, breathing thing. So as the system evolves, there is the ability to integrate with Morrison so that the patient will be able to order their menus directly on the screen. So. Um, I love where you're going, but it won't be in this first round, but it's coming. <laughs> While you're here, I think one of the really nice features um, on this information that marketing put is just to ex uh, explain the scrubs so that everybody knows what the colors are. So I know you guys are all color coordinated, but as a bedside nurse, I may not, or as a patient, I may not understand. I know you guys look different than you guys, but why do y'all all look different? So I like that information. They also give them tips um, and information about what the DAISY Award is for. <clears throat> Ways to give, that's foundational information if the patient wants to give back. And the information channel will take the patient to the information again on how to run the remote control or the pillow speaker to work their system. Wash your hands and ask others to be eating your care team. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll go back to the main menu. There's a lot of written text information. Again, great for visitors and families. Um, as a bedside staff, you're probably not gonna spend a lot of time doing that. But what you will spend time for is how do we distract our patients from the pain, anxiety, loneliness, right? What else can we do for them so they stop pushing the red call light, right? What else can we do? So one of the things that we have available now for patients besides television, the interactive program guide, um, is we have the ability to show movies to the patients. The patients are not charged for the movies. There's 65 movies that are updated every quarter. They're put in different categories. So you can see you find a category that you like, up and down, and then you go left and right and find a movie. You can just hit the select button and it'll give you a little brief synopsis of what the movies are. <clears throat> Number one will give you the A to Z listing of all the movies. Just make sure if you start a patient's movie that if you pick the dash ES, it's gonna be in Spanish. So you just find a movie that you want to watch and select and it will start. 
before any movie plays, there's going to be a 15 second public service announcement that marketing is in charge of um, making for your uh, patients. They're usually seasonal, so you'll see allergies, hydration, exercise, flu vaccine, mammograms. They can't fast forward, they have to watch it. Every time they start a new movie, they have to watch the public service announcement. I think there's six or seven to start off with. And then your movie begins. You'll notice that there are some R-rated movies on the system, but the movies that are R-rated have been what we call scrubbed for airport quality, so language, violence, and nudity have been removed from those videos, so they'll look a little different than they do if you were to see them at home. Same thing holds true, so if I'm in the middle of watching my movie and I get interrupted, I can hit the select button, which will pause my movie for up to 10 minutes. The difference is I can still save my spot in my movie, but it will only save your spot in your movie for 24 hours. So the education videos that they're watching will save throughout their admission. The movie will only save for 24 hours. All you have to do is hit select, and now we've saved our movie. If this patient had actually been admitted, then there would be a line on the dashboard that says resume my movie, and they could go directly back to their movie. Now, if they've saved a spot in 24 movies, it will only put the last one that they saved up there. So some patients start a movie and they're like, I don't like this one. Start one, I don't like this one. Um, it will only put the last movie that they watched up there. <clears throat> so kind of cool. So we've got some audio visual things. Um, some things we want that are just audio. So sometimes I don't want a lot of things going on on screen. I want them to sleep. You now have the ability to play music for your patients. So there's eight different categories, and this will be an expanding list, but for right now, this is what we have. You just select a category that you want. The screen will stay static. The only thing that changes is the name of the patient, uh, of the song that's playing. So if you want something where there's not a lot of light and flashing going on, and then changing your videos, just a matter of going up, hit the next category. Okay. If you have the pillow speaker, there's also a headphone jack on the pillow speaker so the patients can plug in headphones if they'd like that. Okay, so that's one of our audio features, audio only. The other audio only feature that we have is we've got spiritual content. So under the spiritual content, this is all audio, but we have four different types of content. Under all four of them are pre-recorded education, inspiration, and prayer, so they can find something that may be relative to what they're experiencing. So they can pull them up and listen to these. If perhaps um, they would like to listen to the actual recorded text of the Bible, then under, spirit, uh, under Christianity and Judaism, they can actually select the sacred text and it will read the Bible for them. So they pick chapter, book, and verse, and it will read that for them. Again, the background stays static. It's just changing in the corner. So something peaceful, not a lot of flashing and moving around. Chapter 1. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I think this is replacing the small Bibles. Oh, I don't think it's them. replacing them. Um, at my hospital, we actually mm. quit giving Bibles to patients years ago from an infection control process. Um, so, for some patients, that's a very comforting thing to have their spiritual content, but there was no way to actually give it to them. So, now at least we have. Um, you can listen to some sermons on different things. So okay. just, just another option for your patients. White noise channels, sometimes we make it entirely too quiet and then they can't sleep. So the white noise channel, it's actually channel three in your channel lineup. So the screen is really dark, but we put the text on there because if you hear the sound and your screen was black, patients are gonna assume that their TV is broken. So that's why we run the text across the screen. But it's essentially a fan noise, so it just kind of drowns out. I know my husband has to sleep with a fan. He can't stand it to be perfectly quiet. <clears throat> the other two options, um, I, well, the other option on the sleep timer, I can't show you because the patient um, is not admitted here. But a sleep timer is just like you would assume. Um, it allows for the patient, or for you, to set the time um, for the television to turn off automatically. So you can go up to four hours. If I'm getting ready to give you a sleeping pill or a benzo or a NARC, I can go ahead and set, you know, in two hours, I want your TV to shut off instead of just having it thrown on. Um, and the last thing is information on how to access the internet. So they cannot access the internet on the channel, but this just gives them information about the guest Wi-Fi. Okay, any questions about the system?
So we go live on Tuesday. I'll be here on Tuesday to answer questions. I think your patients will really like all the fun stuff on there. And then we just got to direct them to make sure they get their videos watched. I have a comment. Sure. Okay. You know, in our area, we have a hard time, I don't know the rest of the hospital, but keeping up with remote. Um, so yeah. I, and I would, I was thinking one day we might solve that problem because it's, it's that, that's a big stressor for us is always having remotes for our patients. I can tell you Brad Harkey, who is our project manager on this particular project, um, has ordered additional remotes for just that reason. I think there is some discussion on how we can replace the pill speakers with um, that do not work with our system. I think it's an IT slash um, engineering kind of um, hoop that they've got to figure out, but I think the process is to go ahead and do that at some point so that the pill speaker will run the system and you won't need the remote. Right. But for to getting it started and out of the box, those uh, pill speakers could not easily be replaced, so they had to add the remote control to it. And yet, yeah, one of the nurse managers was in here and she said, I've already had to replace two. So I don't know why. I understand they get caught up in the bed sheets and stuff like that. I don't know why patients would steal it, but you know, they will just steal stuff because they can steal stuff. So I well, and it's just it's an independent instrument. I mean, it's just better if something's connected because Correct. We, we have a hard time with that. It's, it's a stressor for me. I always try to find remotes for people. And you know, we might need to look at what kind of options we have available, so we'll take that feedback um, so that maybe you have the ability to have a spare set. I know they've ordered additional right. remotes for just that, but maybe making them a little more accessible, especially in the middle of the night when you're trying to find one for somebody. So that can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. So just know that it's in the lineup. I don't know how long that piece will take so that we can replace these and just put the call lights because yeah, then they're stuck to the wall. Mm -hmm. Any other questions?